This is the story of how an ordinary secondary school found itself in the path of the juggernaut of academisation and how the parents, pupils, teachers and other school staff stood together and saved the school they valued for future generations. It's a short story, but we believe an important one. This is John Rowan School in Greenwich, South East London. I walk past these school gates nearly every day for the last 20 years. Three years ago, my two boys were pupils at the school. That was when the old head left and the new head arrived. No big deal, you'd think. It shouldn't have been. I'll let another parent, Pete, take up the story. We had no personal beef with Nardine Powery, but when she took over the school, obviously, out of curiosity, I Googled her name, and I was alarmed. The first thing that came up was the headline, Teachers quit Fairham School after new head starts to ring the changes. And it goes on, that was her last school, by the way. On her first day in the job last September, she set about making 19 support staff posts redundant. Since then, 38 teaching and support staff have left the school. Some of them, Mrs. Parry admits, because they did not like having their teaching methods challenged. And the next thing you know, surprise, surprise, she had changed Neville Lovett Community School into Fairham Academy. I think one of the biggest things we've seen in the last few years of the academisation is that money leaves the classroom and goes straight up to the top. As specialist education accountants, uh, streets are able to advise governors, business managers and bursars. In terms of financing, academies don't actually receive any additional income. For more information, go to our website, Accounts for Academies. That money is desperately needed in the classroom. On the one hand, we've got cuts, and yet people are taking outrageous salaries. We actually got together parents and teachers and members of the NUT to try and sort of understand what was going on and how we could try and prevent something being sort of railroaded through really. We began to realise we were not alone as other campaigners offered support and came to speak at our public meetings. Firstly the process is really short. By the time you find out about it and do your research half of your window to take any action is gone. The school leadership and the governors do not own our schools. Exactly. They might act like they do, but they don't. This is our children's education that we're talking about. If we don't believe that what they're doing is the right thing, we have a right to say so. You know, sadly, for Dean School, it's too late for us. Um, we'll they, get it back. That, yeah, yeah, we will one day. <laughs> we'll get it back, but it, they've made their decision, the application is in, it probably won't convert until the end of the year. But we've, we went through so much in such a short space of time, <coughs> I would like other parents to be able to benefit from our experience. The skills and organisation that the campaign attracted were never as important as when tackling issues such as the danger to special education needs provision. I thought, oh, shall I have a quick look at Fairham Academy, where our current head uh, used to teach, uh, used to, whatever she used to do then. <laughs> 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 when, when it was Neville Lovett School, I forget, the, I've got the figures, the figures are not important, but it's important to know that the first year it became an academy, became Fairham Academy, the, the number of kids on the SEM register halved. Then it halved again. Could these two things be somehow related? Anyway, so I thought I'd look at John Rowan. Our, our SEN registers have hovered around the 10% for the last, you know, same period, basically. So what does that tell me? I know it already because of the way, the way that I experienced SEN delivery in the school. But it tells me that it's a truly comprehensive mm. school. By now, we had a campaign growing through discussions, petitioning, leafleting, Facebook and tweets, all of which attracted support from parents, staff, trade unions and councillors. Our local MP recognised the groundswell of opinion and spoke at a public meeting. I think it's important to know, and this is particularly apt in the case of John Rowan, there is absolutely no reason to jump now and make the decision to convert to academy status. Without the dedication of the, the NUT of the time, now the NEU, and their, their willingness to strike to save their school, I don't, I don't think a parent's campaign on its own would have done it. But I do think the parents' campaign added a vital element. Um, we were out there on their pickets with them every time. We were obviously pressurising councillors, harassing MPs, getting the press down. Can I just ask, Kathy, what about your view on parental balance? Sorry, can I say that we'll take questions mm. after that? All right. Mm. I know. Oh, 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 oh,
I support parental ballot, I, I, and I've said that very clearly. It's on my website. I tweeted it umpteen times. I know we had a, a conversation about how I can, you know, how how can MPs communicate better? We could all do better. People poured their talents into the campaign, created banners, wrote leaflets, made speeches, filmed videos, adapted songs, illustrated placards. Contacted journalists, questioned councillors, tweeted tweets, drank coffee and ate cake. John Rome Resist was like a patchwork quilt of a campaign. Since we stood up as parents and teachers and formed John Rome Resists, we have achieved quite a bit. Over 1,300 people signed the petition against becoming an academy and we forced them to delay any decision for six months. That was a crucial thing to do. It's actually only 2016 when we were forced um, to take a number of strikes over a number of issues, but the one of the most important one being to fight the academisation, the threat of academisation. And we won. And therefore I'm telling you, it can be done. I celebrate. Come together as a community and celebrate your victories. Absolutely fantastic. Well done to all of you. And it was fun. We were enjoying being together. We were enjoying being in community. Primary schools are in the firing line right now. Schools like Avenue Primary, where the parents are going through the same process of questioning and learning, explaining and campaigning that we went through. They have built a dynamic and vibrant campaign and linked up with other local schools in the same position. I mean, the majority of this community are what? Low income. And majority we're working class. Yes. You know, we're a diverse, mixed community. It's predominantly working class. Okay. We have a high migrant community. Okay. Yes. And um, the, the language they were using was really posh, not shut good. Listen to your community, Newham. Stop academisation. We're going to keep up this action until you listen, and the community is going to do the same itself. I think you are striking about something that's very important to the future of education and the future of our children in this country. This academy's policy has no evidence to back it up. They are making it up. The emperor has no clothes. I tell you, they are driving public voices out and they are bringing private voices in and those private voices have private motives and we have to resist them because they are not the interests of our children. And it's, I think it's so welcome that parents are here with teachers and support staff at this strike. You are so right to be taking a stand on this. Shame on the governor! Shame on the governor! As you can see, the staff and the parents of this school are united in demanding a ballot. We think that's the only democratic way to decide whether a school should become an academy. Uh, but they are afraid to have a ballot because it would clearly go against them. Newham parents and school staff achieved a significant victory for all of us when they persuaded Newham Council to pass a motion which gives parents and staff the right to a binding ballot. We just wanted to know how you guys feel. Uh, ecstatic, but I think, as we've been saying, this is the beginning. It's not the end. Yeah. Yes, we've got this. That's amazing. Yeah. But we've got so much work to do to make sure it goes out to across the borough, across all the schools. Make sure people feel supported. Because yeah. one of the things that was coming out was that schools don't feel supported. That's a real shame. So we need to try and figure out ways to support the schools. Because it's like happy teacher, happy child, happy parent. Yes. You know. The three have to work together. It's a victory for all schools today. All schools. It's all not schools. just us, because it's Keir Hardy, Cumberland, Wallsville, Scott Wilkie, yeah. everyone out there. I think there. have faith and in the parent cost. voice. It was our relentlessness, um, both the parents and the teachers, and support staff in the end, that it proved too much, and she left with her academy plans with her. Think how much stronger we'd be if we had a head and a board of governors and a local council who were on our side working with us to keep John Roll the school that I love, a local community state school that gives every child the education that they deserve. Thank you very much. I'm not saying it wouldn't have mattered if, if, if the academisation hadn't been headed off, but I think what is much more useful for the community and for and for our family to see was that we could join together and we could actually be heard and that's something that that is la that lasts your whole life long wherever community schools are under threat there will be parents pupils and staff that want to stand up and save the schools they love and value that's where the spirit of resistance will be found 
and the fight continues. John Roan resists. How passionate Our parents and the community feels about academisation. Nobody wants it. Get it out of our borough. We don't want it.